to see each one of you in the house of the Lord today. This is our communion Sabbath. It's a little bit different from our regular Sabbaths, but make yourself at home. We want you to just enjoy fellowshipping with us today. I'm going to invite our clerk to come forward and share our official welcome with you at this time. Morning. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome each of you here today. It does my heart glad that we have put aside things that we treasure to make room for God, whether we are worshiping here in person or via our social media platforms. God sees you making room for him by worshiping, singing, and praising his holy name on this Sabbath day. May God continue to bless each of you and give you blessings that you do not have room enough to receive it. Now, once you receive those blessings that God has given you, please share it. Share love. Thank you for worshiping with us again and feel free to drop by Longview Heights SDA Church, 685 East Mallory, for those of you who are online, or drop by any of our social media platforms. I pray to see you again. I just have like three announcements, but they're very, very important. Attention high school graduates of the classes of 2022, 2021, and 2020. The youth department, we have not forgotten about you. We have planned a very special tribute for each of those graduating classes and their families on June 30th. Please contact me by June 18th to ensure that, you have that we have included everyone who wishes to participate. I can be reached in person or by phone, 901-264-5873. Also, we have a very special Father's Day program on June 25th at 11 a.m. sponsored by the InReach Ministries. I, we would need each of you to submit a picture of your dad, uncle, or father figure. Include a word that best describes him. Submit a two-minute video answering what is fatherhood. And this is optional, but we would rather for you to do it and participate. Please submit these things by June 18th. Please send to Mariah Brown, mariahbrown92 at gmail.com. And that's M-O-R-I-A-H Brown, 92 at gmail.com or 901-337-0577. We also need three fathers to volunteer to speak for five to 10 minutes on what is fatherhood, please let her know by June 12th. And finally, we have a message from our head deacon. Words of thankfulness for the brethren that heard to the call and responded to the call. I, Kenneth Dabney, along with our assistant, Robert Jones, would like to thank the brethren that heeded to the call to assist in the cleanup of the parking lot on Sunday June 5th, 2022. Words cannot express how grateful we are for the response of the deacons and our church brethren to heed to the call and come. We say thank you. And the church says thank you for a job well done. Even though it's not complete, a thank you is in order. Thank you, brethren. I would like to share the names of the deacons of our church brethren that went the extra mile. Deacons Ricky Johnson, Willard Mead, Roger Rawls, and his two nephews, R Uriah Davis and Zayden Vaughn, Joseph Morris and Frederick Williams, and his friend Tony, Robert Jones, and Kenny Dabney. Our church brethren that responded to the call was Herbert Brown Jr., Jalen Brown, Brian Johnson, Erwin Walls, Claude Jones, and his two grandsons and to thanks to Elder Roger Turner. Again, thank you, brethren. Our, our God is good. 
Thank you, and have a blessed Sabbath day. If this um, is the day that the Lord has made, but maybe also in this month you had a birthday. And if you had a birthday in the month of June, would you stand? We'd like to sing happy birthday to you. Okay, there's one guy here. Another person, another person. Just stand up. Let's sing happy birthday to all of our friends and members. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday to you. Amen. We used to give out um, cupcakes, but because I'm not supposed to eat cupcakes, I can't give them to you. Y'all can't have them either. Next time, we'll have some apples and oranges, all right? Oh, hallelujah. There's nothing like the health message. Uh, <laughs> does anybody get married in the month of June? If so, would you please stand? Anyone get married in the month of June? All right. Nobody got married in the month of June. Okay, all right. Well, all of you all that are married, we still want to say we're hoping that your marriage will continue, even though you didn't get married in June. Amen. Look, we are excited about some of the wonderful things that are happening at our school. And I want to just share some information with you because I think it's important for you to know. You may not have all this information, but you can definitely contact me, our elder Donna Owens, and we can share our, our Dr. Folsom, and we can share more information with you. We are we're in the process of uniting two schools together, something that I think is exciting. Come on and say amen. The NJA school and the GMAA school, uh, we have believed that we're going to be partners this year so that by August, we will have one school. And that new school will be called MAA, Memphis Adventist Academy. Now what we're doing is that we're, we're having a memorandum of understanding. We don't have a constitution yet, but we're working on that doing this next year. But our memorandum of understanding is being created so that both organizations can work together peacefully and harmoniously and work where we can excel the students that go to our school. Um, I just want to read a little bit of the talking points that, that we have. Under the MOU, the following is recommended. The school will be at the MJA campus at 50 North Mendenhall Road, Memphis, Tennessee, 38117. The school name will be the Memphis Adventist Academy. Note the official way this happens for the year is both GMAA and MJA are doing business as M-A-A. It is requested that both G-M-A-A and M-J-A school boards remain with their present members throughout the MOU and partnership being processed. All present vacancies should be filled as per the school constitution. All teachers under the contract will remain under contract for the 2022-2023 school year. The new principal is Fabian Reed. He is already here in our community and is engaging in our school leaders, engaging as our school leaders. Many have already met Principal Reed and our hopes have been lifted. I plan to invite uh, our new principal to our church so, so that you can meet him as well. Still a lot of work needs to be done um, there's, a, there's a lot of questions that we still have to answer. We plan to have a meeting where we all can come together, a town hall meeting to talk about it, and, and we'll be giving you that information as soon as possible. We plan to have a constituency meeting to vote this, this, this partnership before the end of this month. So things are moving really quickly. So keep us in your prayers. Uh, your pastor will not be at camp meeting this year, 
Um, but camp meeting will begin uh, Wednesday of next week. And on that Sabbath, this coming Sabbath, we'll show camp meeting on our screen. Um, and then there's a meeting, um, it's called The Call. Um, it's where North American Division pastors meet together. It starts uh, on the 19th uh, of this month and goes for three or four days in Lexington, Kentucky. I'll be at that meeting for, for that time period. But all of these, these things are going on. We're still gonna have uh, our church services. We won't have prayer meeting Wednesday night because that will be camp meeting. Nor Vespers Friday night because that will be camp meeting. Are y'all following so far? Okay, so we'll still have different things going on during the week, but camp meeting starts on Wednesday. So we'll, we'll show camp meeting on Sabbath on the screen, but you can cap, capture camp meeting on your, your phone or on your, your computer uh, by going to the South Central Conference website, and I believe that you will really enjoy it as well. It's good to see all of, all of our deaconess and all of our deacons and our elders. We're doing, camp meet, we're doing communion for the first time in about two years here in the church. Would you stand with me today, everybody? And let's repeat uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We're doing it out of the King James, so let's start. But ye shall receive. Ready? But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye witnesses unto me, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We're going to have our prayer at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. How blessed we are to gather today. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to pray, I just want to encourage you to get the things on your mind, the concerns that you have, the requests that you may have, to pull them into your heart and get them on your mind. And now I've got some really good news. Before you can tell God what you need, he's already put provision in place. That is who we serve. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we are so grateful to you for everything. Father, thank you for the way you love us, for the way that you forgive us. Lord, for the way that you provide for us. Lord, Lord, for the way that you, you give us protection and for the way that you bring us peace and for the way that you comfort us. And Lord, for the countless many ways, God, that you sustain our health. Lord, that you keep us in our right minds. God, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to be light to your children. Thank you, Lord, for every day that you've given us on this earth so far and for every opportunity that you've given us to show love. Now, Father, I ask that you would just draw in a little bit closer to every person that is tuned to this service at this time. Lord, bless every household that is represented. Lord, bless every person. May we all be good lights, good light bearers because of your goodness and grace toward us. Now, Father, we are excited to be, to plan for communion today. Lord, we are excited for who you are and have been in our lives. Let us never forget it and let us never take it for granted. Father, please forgive us of our sins. And Father, please create within us clean hearts and renew right your right spirit within us. Thank you, Lord, and bless this service. May we honor you, God. In your matchless and holy name, we pray these things. We ask these things, and we expect and believe in the holy name, in the matchless name of God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to go back and do a, a familiar one. The song was written by Andre Crouch when he was 14 years old. And this song has gone on to be a, a favorite hymn all around the world. We want you to join in with us. The song says, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Anybody know that song? 
Does anybody know that song? We want you to sing it with us. Sing it like you mean it. Those of you at home, we want you to sing it so loud that we can hear it. Hear you right here at 685 East Mallory. So let's join in together. Come on, let's join in right here. Everybody. The blood. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back. day to day from day to day it will never it will never lose this well second verse it soothes my doubts everybody it soothes What else does it do, praise team? right here. Come on, for it reaches, everybody. For it reaches to the highest mountain. That's it. Mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. To the to that. says Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like who? Somebody said like you. <laughs> you should have said like me. 
old song used to say, I was a rich, a rich undone. I'm not sure, Sister Jenkins, what the undone rich was, but whatever it was, that's what we all were. <laughs> Amen. That's not good. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. But Jesus went to Calvary. As a matter of fact, the scripture says, while we were yet sinners, somebody finish that. What does it say? Christ died for us yes. while we were yet sinners. And yes. so the song says, There is no greater love. Come on, join in with me.
stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. St. John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. St. John, and will you pause just a minute? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we're thankful for your word today. Speak through your word to our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture text is found in St. John. Chapter 21, and our, 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 our title of our message would be Fishing, Fishing. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night, they caught nothing. When the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Have you ever been fishing? One of the churches I was in a while back ago, the men would go fishing. And um, 
fishing out in the ocean and me do not agree with one another. I got tremendously sick out in the ocean. We were in Houston and they would go 90 miles out in the ocean. It really was unfair to the fish because they would use sonar to find the fish. Instead of being skilled, they wanted you to get your money's worth because this was not a free expedition. And so they knew where the red snappers, does anybody know anything about red snappers? They knew where the red snappers were and they'd find the red snappers and you'd look down and you'd see all the red snappers and you'd put some terrible stuff on your, 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 your hook, a squid. It was just, it, it, it made me sick, okay? The waves made me sick. Everything about it made me sick. I don't even eat fish, okay? But it was sickening to just see all the stuff going on to catch these fish. You'd let the, the, you wouldn't even cast it out. You'd just let it down, and fish would just come on your line. You had a limit of 15 fish that you could catch. I would catch my 15, and I was sick as a dog catching these fish, and I would bring them back to my members and I would give them to them. Now some of my members were from the islands and they would be upset that we cut the head off of these fish. They wanted to eat the head as well. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, but but they, would, they would say, Pastor, you're such a good person to bring us these fish. They did not understand. I didn't like fish anyway. I mean, they're good in the fish bowl, but I wasn't going to eat them. Okay, okay, I know, I know that you all are different from I am. Uh, I have a problem with killing animals most of the time. But, but, but that was the thing, all right? That was the thing. I would give them, I enjoyed it, but I was sick. And they said, Pastor, you got to go out one more time. We're going to go out next year. And I said, oh, I don't want to do it, but I wanted to be with the men, okay? I could take it. Let's go fishing, because fishing, they said, was a manly thing. Help me, Holy Ghost. They said, they convinced me that if you're a real man, you could go out there. So this time I tried to take Dramamine. You ever had that before? Dramamine, and I was going to be okay because I wouldn't get sick. I did take the Dramamine. It did not work. Not only did I get sick, but there was a storm that was causing the ship to go up and down. And I promised God, if you just let me off this ship, I will never go fishing in the ocean again. So far, I've been able to keep my promise. Don't get any ideas. The whole idea is that fishing takes some, usually, fishing takes some skill. And after Jesus had seen the disciples, and um, the third time he was going to meet with them, the Bible says, the, the, the third person, John, that writes this, said he showed himself to them this way. So they went out. But remember, Peter was always leading. And he said, I'm going to go fishing, and other disciples joined him. Two disciples we do not know the name of. I believe that was room in the boat for you as a disciple. So today, get on the boat with these other disciples, and all seven of us will go out night fishing. Because the way they fished, they used a net. And so that the fish would not see the net, they would fish at nighttime. They were there in the evening, then the later part of the night, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. All night long, they were there. One o'clock in the morning, no fish were caught by the disciples. They were on the same lake where Jesus had walked. When the, wheel, when the billows were, 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 were dashing in the boat, and Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, let me walk on the water. They were in the same lake. When the waves were coming in the sea and Jesus was asleep on a pillow and they woke him up and said, don't you care that we perish? And Jesus woke up and said, peace, be still. They were in the same lake, help me, Holy Ghost, where they went across to the Gennesaret and a wild man came after them and Jesus calls that man to be in his right mind clothed. On this lake at night, they must have remembered all the things that Jesus had done. They must have remembered all the wonderful things that Jesus had gone through and how he had miracles, and yet they caught no fish. See, fish for the disciples were a means 
of sustenance. Fish for the disciples was the way that they got paid. Everybody goes fishing. Maybe you fish in the hospital. Maybe you fish in the school. Maybe you get a check from the government every month. Heavenly Holy Ghost. But how many people realize that you need some fish in your life? Uh, everybody has to have some. And the disciples said, Jesus is gone now. He, he's not going to divide the fish and like he did with the disciples before and 5,000 people could eat. If we want some fish, we better go out and get some ourselves. And so they were out there all night trying to make a living. There's nothing wrong with making a living. The disciples were trying to make a living on their own power. And whenever you try to live without having God to lead you, three things will happen. First, there will be frustration. Second, you will realize the brutality of your living. And thirdly, you will see failure. And this is what happened to the disciples. The Bible says they were out all night, frustrated because they could not get any fish. They were, have you ever been there? where you are trying to make ends meet and it just didn't seem to work and frustration came in when your money was much, much lower than your bills and even though you were trying to make it, it seemed like it didn't work out all right. I know, I know, I know. You all are blessed and highly favored and, and uh, you don't know anything about having a need. But there are some people, help me Holy Ghost, there are some people that don't have any food to eat this morning. There are some people that have no place to sleep today. There are some people that can't wear the nice clothes that we have on, and they're wondering, they're frustrated, saying, God, why don't you help me? There's frustration. They've been toiling all night. Then there is brutality. Maybe in your life, you're trying to get some relationships right. You're trying to help those children that, that seem like they're just not listening to you. You know, the adult children. Is anybody listening to me today? And, and you prayed for them, and, and they still are not making the best decisions. And it seems like regardless of what you do, that it's fruitile, that you're toying with them all night. You're praying, and it doesn't seem like God has come through. And before you know it, you feel like giving up. Then there's this wonderful thing called failure. Or even in our own personal lives, in my life, where I'm trying to live for God, and before I know it, I've done something wrong again. I've, I promised God I wasn't going to do it, but I did it again. That's those, those addictions that we have. Some of us, we, we can't tell our addictions. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because they're private addictions. Now, I turned to your neighbor and said, you got some private addictions. You got some private. Uh, you you you're not gonna you're not gonna tell you're not gonna put that on Facebook, all right? You you're not gonna get that to in, Instagram. Uh, this, this is something that you think you're the only one that knows about it, but in essence, you are not the only one that knows. Failure from obeying God is fishing and not catching anything. Not catching anything. All night. Some of us have been fishing for years. Haven't caught anything. Some of us have been coming to church fishing. And haven't caught anything at all. There's always something in our life that's bringing us down. Maybe a relationship we have with our spouse or with our children or with our job. And before we know it, we've gone back to failure. And all night we're frustrated. I want to let you know three things real quickly today. First of all, Jesus knows where you are. Hallelujah. Jesus knew where the disciples were. He was on the beach. He knew when Peter said, I'm going fishing, and they got in the boat. He sees us in our boats of life and how we try to do things our way. And he just watched. Sometimes Jesus has to let you get frustrated. 
Sometimes Jesus has to let you see futility in everything that you're doing that is not working right. Sometimes Jesus even has to let you fail. And when you fail, you realize you can't do it on your own. They were trying, but they were weak. They were, they were, they were feckless. They, they, they did not have the ability to catch fish, but Jesus knows where you are. Now, I'm not talking just about geographically, but he knows where you are spiritually. Am I right about it? Jesus knows where you are with your relationship with him. And we can fake it in front of everybody else, but Jesus knows where I am. Jesus knows my weakness. Jesus knows all about my trouble. He knows my failures, and he sees me out there trying to fish my own way. If you try to fish without Jesus, you'll always be frustrated. There'll be brutality and failure. They never asked, Jesus, will you help us fish? They had examples that Jesus could fish. Luke chapter 5, they were out fishing. And Jesus had them to cast their nets out, and they went a little bit deeper, and the fish were so much in the boat that the boats began to sink. Jesus can fish. First thing I want you to know is that Jesus knows where you are. Secondly, if I had a long time today, I would spend a lot of time on that, but I can't. Secondly, Jesus knows where the fish are. He created the fish. Did he say somewhere the silver and gold is mine? Did he say that I've created the human? Everything on the earth, the heavens and the earth, all belong to him. He created them to prove that he created them. When they caught fish later on in the chapter, they counted 153 fish. They were let, they, he, Jesus was letting you know, if I want some fish, I can get fish when I want them. If I want souls, I can get souls when I want them. If I want to increase your bank account, I can do it. If I want to give you the things that you need, I know where the fish are. Hallelujah. Jesus, you may not know how you can make it in this economy where the prices are higher and the interest rates are going higher and the gas prices are higher. God knows where the fish are. If you want to get some fish, go to God. He's a mighty fisherman. Hallelujah. I get excited about that. Oh, yeah, I, get, I, I have the same problems that everybody else has. I realize that we live in a, in a world where it's stressed out. I'm thankful that I'm not in Ukraine, but I realize there's problems there. I'm thankful that, that everything is not as bad as it could be. But when things get bad in your life, why don't you get on your knees and lift your head to heaven and say, Lord, show me some fish. I need some fish today. The Bible says in our scripture text that he told them, while he was, they didn't know who he was, but they, he told them, fellas, cast your net on the right side of the boat. <laughs> cast your net. Because, see, Jesus knows where the fish are. He said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. I don't know why they followed him, because they didn't know who was talking to them at that particular time. But the Bible says they cast their nets on the right side of the boat. And the nets got so full of fish that they could not pull the net in. Wouldn't you like to have that? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to say, for, for Wells Fargo to say, I'm sorry, sir, but your bank account is so full that we have no more, <laughs> we have no more room for it. Wouldn't you, like, wouldn't you like for your boss to say, you know what? Um, we know that you've been working on this job for a while, but we're just going to give you all the funds that you need. The funds that we should have given you before, the raise that we should have given you before, we're just going to give you all that you need. In fact, we're going to give you more than what you need. The Bible says the, the, the fish were so much, they were in a little boat. But, and that's, maybe that's the problem. 
Maybe your boat is too small for God. They were, they were in a little boat, and they couldn't get all the fish in the boat. And all of a sudden, John said to Peter, I know who that is. Uh, I know who's on the water. I know who called out. Uh, I've seen him do it before. That is the Lord. And Peter jumped out the boat and started swimming. He was more interested in the Lord than the fish. Hallelujah. He went out, gun came to the Lord. The Lord had a fish dinner already ready. Amazing. Jesus in his glorified body, his heavenly body, was eating fish. Oh no, I know that just passed over your head. That's okay, I don't have time to talk about it today. All right? But Jesus, Jesus had this fish and he was feeding them fish, and it was already ready for them. He said, okay, guys, I know y'all hungry, so bring the 153 fish over. We're going we're gonna to eat those fish, too. In fact, you're going to make some money off of those fish as well. Jesus will make sure you find fish if you put him first. Didn't he say, seek ye first the kingdom of God? Listen, if you, if you are obedient to God, he will make a way. I'm a witness that he will. If you show obedience to God, he will get you some fish. Does anybody need fish today? Does anybody want to be a fisherman? Let me see if I can take this to another level. Here in this church, God has some people in this community that are fish that he wants to bring in. Am I right about it? You can't get them by yourself. Huh? But if you go to the divine angler, uh, if you go to the one that knows the aquatic uh, 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 dimensions of the sea and can bring in fish, if you let God have his way, he'll fill up every pew in this church, even the balcony, because he knows where the fish are. Hallelujah. I don't know if you believe it or not, but I believe that God has a catch for us this year, that if we just let him fish for us, if we cast our nets on the right, you know, you're going to have to do something different. Stop doing the same thing that you're doing, expecting something different. Cast your net on the right side of the boat. The Bible says when you do that, your nets will be so full of fish that you won't be able to put them in your boat. Third point. Jesus knows where you are. He knows where I am. He knows that I'm a sinner saved by grace. He knows that I've got issues in my life I can't get the victory over on my own. He knows that if I'm left to myself, I won't make it. He knows where you are. He, he knows exactly exactly where you are. And you know what? He is giving you the opportunity to have faith. <laughs> that's, that's what he's saying. Fishermen have to have faith. Fishermen have to believe that the fish are going to get on the line, are going to get in the net, and all you have to do is say, Lord, I got my net out here. You know, you can't fish in the woods. Are you listening to me? You, you can't catch. If you're going to catch fish, you got to go where the fish are. Oh, I wish somebody was listening to me today. If you're going to catch fish, you got to go where the fish are. In fact, sometimes you got to go out into the deep where the fish are. God, God's not interested in the little minnows. God, God wants you to get some red snappers. God wants you to get some bad, no catfish. Well, if you get catfish, let's ask God to clean them. Oh, y'all not listening to me today. Uh, 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 there's all kind of people out there that God wants to win, but you are the fishermen. God knows every fish, knows every soul. And today, he wants to bring that soul to him. The soul he brings might be your own. The whole point is, you and I, have to be fishers. Am I right about it? How's your fishing going? In the last few years, have you ever brought anybody to Christ? Is there something wrong with your technique? 
Is there something wrong with your commitment, your accountability? What's wrong? Why are there not more fish than what we already have? Maybe we need to cast our nets on the right side. Maybe we need to have enough faith in God to let him do the fishing through us. And when he does that, there will be so many fish that the clerk will not be able to count them all. Hallelujah. be so many fish that we'll say, we, we had to stop counting because there's a number that no man can number. Oh, if we just let God fish through us. Does anybody want to raise their hands and say, I want God to fish through me? I want God to fish through me. Hallelujah. Somebody today, I don't want to, to, to pass by this opportunity without giving you the opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand up today. Whoever you are, please stand. Everyone stand. Today, if you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you want to let him come into your boat, and you want to follow him all the way, you want to be his disciple, you want to be a baptized member of this church, this is your time to come forward, whoever you are. The good thing is that God will accept you just the way you are, just the way you are. I don't care what kind of fish you are. I don't care how big or how small you are. God loves fish. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? This is the time. Maybe you are, you're watching on Facebook today. You want to make a decision to follow him all the way. You can text us at Memphis LVH84576. You can make a decision to say, I want God to be the fisherman in my life. Just make yourself available to him. Peter and the other disciples will tell you that he's the Lord. He knows where the fish are. Hallelujah. Maybe there's something going on in your life today and you want to just raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I've got some issues that I can't do it on my own. I don't know how I'm going to make it on my own. I need help. I need help, God. If that's your desire. Would you just put your hand up and you can take it back down. This is not for me. This is for God. You're saying, God, I'm putting my faith in you. I've been fishing all night long, all year, all my life. Can't find any fish. Lord, will you help me? Will you help me, Lord? Hallelujah. You may be seated. available to him. I want God to be the fisherman through me. I may not like the deep waters, but he can help me. And my mother used to sing the song, a song that he landed many a thousand. <laughs> He's able to get you there if you trust him. Uh, if you just put all your trust in him. Look, I'm thankful that we have a God that knows where we are. Aren't you glad for that? Let's be fishermen. We got some cousin in. You got some relatives. You got some, you got some co-workers. They're just floundering in the waters of life. Why don't you live a life that they can see Jesus in you? He'll do a fishing job. <laughs> and you'll be amazed how he'll bring more in than what you can ever imagine. We're going to go into our communion service. I'm going to ask our elders that has the scripture and the elders that have the prayer to come to the microphone, and uh, we will get our communion service started. The scripture reading is 1 Corinthians 11, verses 6, I'm sorry, verses 23 to 26. For I have
have received one, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us pray. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world. We approach the throne of grace in your name. Father, we present before you the emblems of this communion. You are the God that can turn common things to sacred things. Yes, God. Oh, Lord, we ask that you bless us as you've invited us to sup with you now. It is this service that reminds us of why you came to the cross. Help us, Lord, to turn our eyes onto the cross to see you hanging up there. These emblems represent the fact that you came to die for us. Isaiah reminds us that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And it, and it is by your stripes that we are healed. Oh, Lord, we are asking for a miracle today. Turn these emblems into powerful instruments that you will use to wipe out our transgressions, to to remove our iniquities and then give us a reasonable measure of peace that comes only from you as we partake of these emblems. If there's anybody here that has a physical ailment because of the promise that it is by your stripes that we are healed, as we partake of the emblems, Lord, let it be that healing agent. Father, we pray that you draw us closer to you by the end of this service. We pray that you will remind us that you're soon to come. For the word said we are to remember your death until you come. So we are looking for you to come, Lord. May this service, may the effective working of, of these emblems in our lives, in our minds and in our souls. Lord, may the bread of heaven that was broken for us feed us until we want no more. May the blood of Christ that is represented by this wine give us strength from day to day and prepare us for that day when we shall see you coming through the clouds of glory take us all home so we can have that communion one more time with you around the throne of grace. Come now, Lord, and serve your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We invite our deaconess to uncover the Lord's table. God save
Has anyone been omitted? this is my body that was broken for you and my blood that was shed for you. Eat and drink it. about you, but I, I kind of miss that homemade bread that we used to think. <laughs> just, just being honest with you, okay? We got to do what we got to do. I um, we keep our head deaconess in our prayer. We were feeling too good, so she couldn't make it today. But um, praise God for communion. Amen. We haven't we haven't gotten to the ordinance of humility yet, but hopefully we'll get there. I'm still concerned about the rise of COVID, and I want you to be safe. I want you to be healthy. Amen? I want to thank all of our deacons and our deaconess that participated in this service, all of our elders. I'm glad that you could be here today. It's a little bit longer than what we normally have, but we try to cut it short in righteousness. We're going to have our benediction, but we won't, we won't cheat you by not giving you, you the opportunity to give an offering for all the things that God has done for you. Would you just raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. You can never repay him for all he's doing in your life. Am I right about it? I don't care how much money you have. It's his money anyway. All right? But I, I wouldn't want to cheat you out of the opportunity of high praise. High praise is when you give to God. And I hope that you give sacrificially and cheerfully and systematically to God's cause. I'm going to ask our elder to come forward at this time. that you will please bless the gifts that we give today. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Deacon, as you can run on the Lord's table. I know it was a blood
was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. One day. We have some help. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was a blood for me. He's coming back again. He's coming. Musicians, play up one time, musicians. 